So first of all, I would like to thank Serena for the kind invitation because this is my first time at the ECGB and uh, in Trieste too. So uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. So uh, as uh, Serena anticipated, I'm an expert in signaling. So I have to say that uh, my talk will try to give you uh, an example on how U.S. Uh, ima uh, ultrasound imaging can be used um, to uh, study the effect of signaling uh, in uh, cardiac disease in preclinical models. So, I uh, hope I will not bore you too much uh, talking about mechanism underlying uh, uh, in this uh, specific uh, uh, contest. Uh, um, the, the, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> underlying the, 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 the cardiotoxicity induced by anti-cancer drugs. So. Uh, in a way, we are going back to the, the topic already introduced by the first speaker uh, of this morning, which is the cardiotoxicity induced by uh, anti-cancer drugs. So the emerging concept in the field of cardio-oncology is that uh, more and more heart failure and cancer should be considered as two comorbidities because, uh, and also treated as comorbidities because more and more often these two uh, diseases can uh, coexist within uh, the same patient. And there are data in literature indicating that the tumor can, of course, uh, uh, release some signal and can uh, uh, somehow um, sorry, <laughs> and can uh, affect cardiac function. But on the other hand, a very recent paper showed last year that uh, the failing heart can also prime carcinogenesis. And probably the underlying mechanism is, uh, again, the release of molecules, uh, systemic uh, signals that can reach uh, a uh, particular site and induce the uh, onset of tumor. But uh, on top of that, we have to consider that uh, uh, patients with uh, um, cancer or our failure uh, receive uh, uh, anti-cancer treatments, so primary chemotherapy, but also radiotherapy. And uh, as already introduced by the previous talk, this is a major cause of cardiotoxicity. And among the most cardiotoxic uh, agents are anthracyclines, already described by uh, Giuseppina. But uh, despite being so cardiotoxic, these drugs are still widely used because uh, they are quite effective and can be used to treat uh, a wide uh, variety of cancers, going from hematological malignancy, malignancies to solid tumors. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the cardiotoxicity is um, quite severe, and it is known that uh, is uh, dose dependent. So so that uh, usually uh, the, the dose of doxorubicin uh, is uh, uh, used in, in the clinic should be lower than 200 milligrams per square meter. And uh, the, the peculiarity of this cardiotoxicity is that of uh, um, manifesting even uh, longer after the, the end of the treatment. So it's now accepted that this cardiotoxicity can manifest uh, usually within one year uh, from the completion of the treatment. And uh, as you can see from these uh, graphics, it's uh, clear that uh, patients who um, uh, underwent uh, uh, chemotherapy uh, develop in, uh, in life a higher susceptibility to uh, develop heart failure. And uh, uh, once uh, the, the, the cardiotoxicity is uh, diagnosed, the patients usually receive the standard of care for heart failure. Um, that unfortunately seems to be quite uh, uh, ineffective. This is probably because the um, pathogenesis of the cardiotoxicity of anthracycline is quite peculiar. And that's why in the last years, uh, uh, many efforts have been put in the understanding uh, the mechanism underlying this kind of uh, uh, heart disease. And um, the, the, the classical uh, view um, states that, uh, I mean, that the um, I mean, we could somehow um, link the cardiotoxicity of uh, doxorubicin to production of reactive oxygen species. But the, the, from a more general point of view, the, the, we believe that uh, these anti-cancer drugs are toxic because uh, they um, somehow interfere or modulate the uh, signaling pathways that are uh, crucial for the survival of not only cancer cells, but also of cardiomyocytes. And uh, the, the, the way anthracyclines work is, of course, uh, that of producing uh, reactive oxygen species. So these uh, drugs increases the reactive oxygen species up to toxic threshold, so that uh, leads to um, death of uh, tumor cells. But we know that also cardiomyocytes are somehow susceptible to higher uh, levels of reactive oxygen species. And it's known that uh, the heart is particularly uh, susceptible to uh, exaggerated oxidative stress because the antioxidant uh, system of cardiomyocytes is somehow lower than other tissue. 
However, uh, it has been demonstrated that uh, um, antioxidants uh, do not have any, uh, cannot provide any benefit to uh, patients with anthracycline cardiotoxicity. This has been proved by small clinical trials. And so this, uh, some years ago, led to the hypothesis that perhaps the cardiotoxicity of anthracyclines may be due to different mechanisms. And uh, as I explained to you before, we strongly believe that the, 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 the signaling pathways uh, controlling the survival of tumor cells and cardiomyocytes could be a common target of these, uh, uh, of these drugs, and this could explain the cardiotoxicity. I also mentioned at the very beginning of my talk that I'm an expert of signaling, and particularly of this class of enzymes that are called the PI3 kinases. And um, most, of you, most of you probably are aware of the fact that this pathway is um, uh, among the most frequently mutated signaling pathway in cancers, and mutations in uh, uh, the, 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 this enzyme can lead to tumor progression. Uh, this is a very large family of enzymes, including many different isoforms, uh, and the best uh, known is uh, probably the pietrocanase alpha because uh, this is one of the most famous oncogenes. Uh, but uh, there are many other isoforms, and our beloved is uh, this uh, isoform, the, the, the gamma one, that is not found uh, in tumor cells, but is found in the so-called tumor microenvironment, uh, and uh, particularly tumor-associated macrophages, and uh, it can somehow indirectly uh, promote the, the growth of the tumor. But uh, main, in the last 10 or I would say 15 years, we also found that these enzymes are crucial regulator of many different uh, functions of uh, um, cardiomyocytes and more in general, crucial regulator of cardiac function. And the, 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 our beloved isoform, the pietrikinase gamma, was uh, described to be involved um, both <laughs> in, the, uh, in the regulation of uh, uh, leukocyte infiltration upon, upon cardiac stress, but also in controlling cardiomyocyte survival. So given this uh, dual role of this uh, enzyme in the tumor and in the heart, and particularly of this isoform I was mentioning, we thought that probably this could the signaling could have a role in the cardiotoxicity uh, induced by uh, anthracyclines. And so we decided to test our hypothesis and we decided to set up a model of doxorubicin cardiotoxicity in our lab. I have to say that we struggled uh, a bit because um, I mean, and there are many different protocols published uh, in, uh, in the literature, but most of them rely uh, on uh, the injection of high-dose doxorubicin that leads to um, systemic uh, toxicity and does not really recapitulate what uh, uh, clinicians usually observe in patients. Patients that uh, uh, usually receive many different, uh, different several, sorry, several doses of uh, of uh, anthracyclines and other drugs, of course, over the time, and they manifest the cardiotoxicity quite late after the, the stop of the treatment. And another big issue we had to consider while uh, uh, trying to set up the model was that uh, trying to model this pathology in mouse, we realized that, of course, there's a huge variability among different strains. And as you can see here, we decided to use this uh, particular strain of mice, and you will understand in a minute the minute the reason of that. So these mice are uh, different from uh, the, the, the strain described by, uh, by Giuseppina uh, at the beginning of the session this morning. And uh, basically, uh, we found that these mice were quite susceptible to uh, develop doxorubicin cardiotoxicity. But to cut a long story short, we decided to, we end up with this protocol that is characterized by a three sequential injection of doxorubicin over three weeks. And uh, uh, we basically measure the cardiac function of mice, of course, before the treatment and six weeks after uh, the start of the treatment. And uh, we, we decided to model this uh, in uh, two different uh, uh, mouse lines, of course, uh, our wild type controls, but as I, we wanted to understand if the signaling uh, uh, of pietri uh, was uh, uh, involved in this uh, uh, mechanism, we used a model in which uh, um, the, 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 the enzyme was indeed expressed by the mice, but was catalytically inactive, so could not really exert its function. 
And uh, just to summarize the major feature of this model, uh, we found that this uh, kind of protocol was uh, well tolerated by mice. Indeed, uh, we, we couldn't uh, observe any difference in the food intake after the treatment, neither in uh, uh, the locomotor activity of the mice. So the mice were quite happy, uh, even though they received this uh, doxorubicin. And then uh, we, we also find that uh, according to what it is described in literature for um, humans, Doxorubicin can induce to a slight decrease in body weight, but this was again well tolerated by mice. Indeed, we couldn't uh, observe any significant difference in the mortality of the doxorubicin treated mice, at least at the time points that we decided to uh, analyze. As concerned cardiac function, we uh, found that this kind of treatment was able to induce a, a significant reduction in the fractional shortening of wild-type mice as, uh, as expected. While uh, in the, here, uh, as I told you before, we measured the, the, uh, the cardiac function long after the, the treatment, uh, after the stop of the treatment. And we were quite very happy to see also that uh, the, the mice in which the, the, the signaling we were interested on was uh, knocked down, uh, basically uh, had completely preserved contractility even after receiving this uh, dose of uh, doxorubicin. And this uh, cardiac, um, this parameter, um, I mean this difference in uh, cardiac contractility was uh, uh, somehow um, confirmed and paralleled by a similar uh, trend of major cardiac markers of cardiac injuries, such as, such as for example, um, plasma troponin T levels, in which we could uh, detect a rise in wild-type animals after doxorubicin, but this was again not present in the kinds of animals and uh, similar trends with uh, the other two key markers of cardiac injury, such as, such as INF and BNP. And uh, looking at the cardiac uh, parameters, uh, the parameters of cardiac function of these mice more in detail, we found that with this kind of treatment, uh, we were indeed able to uh, observe a significant decrease of the contractility uh, in, in the wild type uh, situation, but uh, at least at the time point that we analyzed, the hearts were still not uh, dilated. Anyway, uh, this was uh, somehow a good, um, a good uh, somehow good result for us because I have to say that it's uh, always quite uh, uh, difficult to have consistent uh, data, at least in terms of uh, the effect of doxorubicin on fractional shortening. And this is not surprising because it has been demonstrated, at least in humans, that not all people undergoing uh, chemotherapy indeed develop this, the cardiotoxicity. So it seems to uh, to, to exist a kind of uh, um, individual susceptibility, and the, the, the reasons are still uh, under investigation, so it's still not clear why. In terms of cardiac remodeling induced by doxorubicin, uh, one of the major effects uh, is, uh, of course, that of uh, um, inducing uh, um, the atrophy of cardiomyocytes and of the cardiac muscle. And uh, we were indeed able to find that uh, the, the, the cardiomyocyte size uh, in the wild type after the treatment with doxorubicin was significantly reduced. This was um, accompanied by increased uh, death of cardiomyocytes. Uh, we could also detect, at, at least at late stages, uh, the deposition of collagen, so a certain degree of fibrosis, even though I have to say that the fibrosis we could detect in this setting was significantly lower to that that we usually observe after pressure overload, just indicating that fibrosis is probably not one of the major uh, pathomechanism underlying uh, uh, the cardiotoxicity of doxorubicin. And again, uh, the, the mice in which our favorite uh, signaling pathway was uh, uh, switched off uh, were completely protected against uh, um, doxorubicin-induced atrophy, apoptosis, and uh, fibrosis. And of course, we were uh, interested in understanding why these mice uh, were uh, protected. And uh, we decided to look at the, the, the signaling pathway in more details. And uh, of course, <coughs> most of you know that uh, the, the major downstream effector of the PTK signaling is uh, AKT, and this is a major pro-survival uh, signaling. 
So we decided to look at the level of this protein in uh, cardiomyocytes treated with doxorubicin, of, and we found that uh, this signaling was uh, switched on uh, very early in, a, in acute fashion after exposure, exposure to doxorubicin, uh, but we were so happy to see that this was not the case when the P3K signaling was blocked by using this compound. So it seems that uh, uh, doxorubicin activates uh, this uh, uh, signaling pathway. And so at that time, we were a bit puzzled how, how it comes that uh, if we block a pro-survival pathway, so as we have in the kinase that animals, uh, they, um, how it comes that, of course, in the kinase that we have less uh, uh, survival uh, uh, pathway, but they uh, perform better because the contractility of these um, hearts were indeed higher than that detected in the wild type situation. And so, we realized that uh, um, the, the, the P3K and the AKT signaling pathway can also control the survival of cardiomyocytes and of other cells through an alternative route that is uh, the one represented by this uh, uh, process named for autophagy. I put here just a cartoon for those that are not familiar with, with, with this process. So this is the main uh, um, recycling the process of the cell. So the, the, the major function of this process is uh, basically to uh, engulf within these vesicles uh, dysfunctional organelles, misfolded proteins that otherwise will accumulate within the cells and could be toxic. And so um, through, this, um, through the formation of this kind of vesicles, uh, the misfolded proteins, dysfunctional organelles can be uh, guided through the, to the lysosome where they are degraded. And so these uh, uh, can be somehow recycled and reused for other processes of the cells. So we wanted to understand whether the signaling we were interested in could somehow have a role in the intracycling uh, induced cardiotoxicity through the modulation of this recycling pathway. And uh, so basically, uh, this seems to be the case. So in this experiment, these are hearts from uh, mice treated with uh, doxorubicin from wild type and pietri kinase gamma kinase dead animals. And the, the, the green dots you can see here in these heart glasses are basically these vesicles, the so-called autophagosomes that, we, that uh, are basically in the process of digesting something that uh, probably could be toxic for the cardiomyocytes. And you would agree with me that the number of green dots here in the kinase dead hearts is significantly higher than the, the levels of uh, uh, the, the number of green dots that we could see in the wild type. And uh, this is uh, even more evident if we somehow block the uh, activity of the lysosome. And so if we leave this um, basically vesicle accumulating in cardiomyocytes, again, you see that this vesicle uh, degrading toxic components of cardiomyocytes are again more abundant in the kinase that, that in the knockout. So the idea at that time was, okay, so probably this uh, recycling process is more active when petrokinase gamma is switched off, and this could help the heart to be uh, to, to keep healthy. But uh, how it comes that uh, a more active <coughs> recycling program can help the heart to keep uh, uh, in shape. So as already uh, described by, the, the, by Giuseppina, the major target of uh, anthracycline cardiomyocytes is represented by mitochondria because uh, doxorubicin can bind uh, um, cardiolipin and so can accumulate in the mitochondria. And uh, after accumulating in the mitochondria, doxorubicin basically can uh, induce the, the production of oxygen, uh, reactive oxygen species. And so if uh, mitochondria, damaged mitochondria are not removed by, uh, from cardiomyocytes, they represent a source of continuous reactive oxygen uh, species production and could uh, in the end lead to cardiomyocyte to that. So we wonder whether the, the more active autophagy we could see in petrikinase gamma kinase at heart was indeed necessary uh, to remove damaged mitochondria. So the mitochondria damaged by anthracyclines. And uh, this is a very busy slide this image that I will try to explain uh, in detail. But basically what we did here, we decided to stain again some heart slices. And here we stained in red uh, 
the, the, the major market of these vesicles, uh, of uh, recycling vesicles of the autophagy process. And in green, this time, we uh, stained the, the DNA of mitochondria. And we were really happy to see that the two staining overlapped because we could uh, we were able to find these uh, yellow dots. And these are basically vesicles containing damaged mitochondria because we could detect uh, the mitochondrial DNA inside. And so pro pro our hypothesis was uh, indeed uh, uh, true. But more importantly, we decided to look at uh, the structure of these uh, uh, hearts in more detail. So we performed the electron microscopy studies uh, again on the hearts from wild type and kind of that uh, animals treated with doxorubicin. And uh, here what you could see is that uh, basically we were able to detect this kind of structures that are really vesicles uh, in the process of digesting damaged mitochondria. And this kind of vesicles were again more abundant in the kinase that does indicating that probably the kinase that were able to um, clear in a more efficient way the major source of reactive oxygen species in anthracycline treated hearts. But of course, we all know that mitochondria are not only the site where um, anthracycline accumulates, but are also the major source of energy of cells and of cardiomyocytes. And so we wonder, we ask whether, I mean, we, we want to understand which kind of impact this kind of mechanism could have on the metabolism of cardiomyocytes. And uh, uh, what we found was that uh, in, uh, in a wild type situation, uh, doxorubicin indeed accumulates within mitochondria and damage these organelles so that we have a significant drop of mitochondrial respiration. And this was uh, basically accompanied to uh, a compensatory upregulation of another metabolic pathway that is the glycolysis because we found that uh, key enzymes of these uh, metabolic pathways were uh, indeed upregulated. But once more, uh, in, uh, in our um, animals, uh, in, in cells in which the P3K signaling was switched off, uh, the mitochondrial function was almost completely preserved, even after doxorubicin treatment, thus indicating that uh, probably this uh, recycling, efficient, uh, efficient recycling of damaged mitochondria could somehow preserve the, the metabolism, the mitochondrial metabolism of these cardiomyocytes. And indeed, no upregulation of uh, glycolytic enzymes was present in these cells. And this is um, how the, 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 the metabolic rewiring that we could uh, detect uh, here in the wild type situation after doxorubicin treatment is somehow reminiscent of the so-called Warburg effect described in tumor cells and of which we know that the P3K signaling is a crucial regulator where basically uh, tumor cells somehow switch off the, switch off the mitochondrial metabolism uh, towards a more anaerobic uh, glycolytic uh, uh, pathway. So we believe that the role of the P3K signaling in uh, uh, cardiomyocytes could be exactly the same. So in a condition of uh, mitochondrial damage the, induced by anthracycline, the P3K switch the metabolism towards another uh, metabolic pathway that does not rely on the use of uh, mitochondria. And uh, we know that this kind of metabolic rewiring could be uh, good, at least at, in early phases, a kind of compensatory response. But we also know that in the long run, glycolysis is a less efficient uh, uh, metabolic pathway and so cannot sustain uh, the cardiac energetics in the long run and so uh, w could lead, at least in the long run, uh, to heart failure. But at, the, at that point, uh, the, the big uh, question mark was uh, how how uh, is it possible that doxorubicin activates the P3K signaling? So I didn't explain too, uh, too much at the very beginning of the talk, but these enzymes are known to be activated by receptors, uh, G-protein coupled receptors, I mean plasma membrane receptors, and uh, <coughs> we couldn't really find a link between doxorubicin and these uh, receptors. Um, but at a certain point, we came through this um, paper showing that uh, 
uh, in different conditions of the heart disease, such as those uh, induced by um, pressure overload, damaged mitochondria uh, can release the mitochondrial DNA, can activate basically a kind of uh, uh, inf inf cardiac inflammation through uh, the activation of this specific receptor that is the TOLAR receptor 9. This is a receptor that is used uh, for us to um, basically detect uh, um, uh, DNA and RNA from pathogens, but uh, has been recently described to be recognized also endogenous uh, mitochondrial uh, DNA. And uh, to cut a long story short, we found that indeed uh, our favorite teams and pietrikinase gamma can localize close to uh, the TLR9 and the mitochondrial DNA in uh, uh, cardiomyocytes treated with doxorubicin. All these yellow spots indicated that indeed uh, within the cell, this uh, PTRK can control this specific uh, signaling pathway. And, um, of course, we demonstrated that uh, uh, doxorubicin can uh, activate uh, the P3K through this uh, specific receptor because if we block this receptor, basically we lose the activation of the P3K signaling by uh, anthracyclines. But I think the most important part was that we could see this not only in isolated cells, but also in the whole hearts from mice that receive doxorubicin. These are indeed hearts from uh, wild type animals, and you could see that after doxorubicin treatment, there's a, a huge activation of the downstream signaling pathway of uh, uh, P3K, while this is uh, completely absent, of course, uh, in uh, uh, hearts from animals in which the P3K signaling is switched off. But the most important part was that if we treat animals with uh, um, a compound that blocks basically the ability of this TLR9 to recognize the mitochondrial DNA released by damaged mitochondria, we lose completely the activation of this uh, signaling pathway. And so uh, at the end, uh, the, 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 the final <coughs> conclusion was that, uh, okay, the, the, the P3K signaling is activated by um, basically the, the, the mitochondria that are damaged by uh, anthracyclines. But is really this the main mechanism underlying the pathogenesis? Is it really, um, you know, the, the, the enhanced autophagy the main uh, reason for the protection we could see in our mice in which the petrikinase was switched off? And so basically we performed this uh, genetic uh, experiment required by referees actually in which we decided to block this recycling process in, uh, in our animals. We did this using adeno-associated virus, and so you should all be uh, aware of uh, this technique, especially in this institute where they've been uh, uh, basically conceived. And uh, what we found is that if we take our mice that I remember you, I remind you, are protected against the doxorubicin cardiotoxicity, uh, and we inhibit autophagy, we see that uh, cardiomyocytes uh, are uh, um, somehow now more susceptible to doxorubicin treatment. Indeed, we could see that again, that the, the size of these cardiomyocytes uh, is uh, smaller compared uh, to the wild type. But again, if we look at the, uh, the, the functional parameters, so the contractility of the heart, uh, we see that uh, when the kinase of mice had inhibit uh, uh, autophagy, they became more susceptible to doxorubicin damage. It was indicating that indeed the protection we could see in this animal was due to a hyperactivation of this recycling process. And this in turn leads to, uh, I mean, we, we believe that this mechanism, the recycling mechanism that is supposed to uh, get rid of these damaged uh, organisms that are a major source of rust and can protect cardiomyocytes against many different uh, toxic effects of uh, uh, anthracycline, including DNA damage, of course, the rust production, but also calcium mishandling. So we believe that this uh, uh, mechanism can really up, um, act uh, upstream, can get rid of the major source of rust, and then uh, as a final uh, uh, result, uh, cardiomyocytes are protected against uh, the different uh, toxicity induced by anthracyclines. Of course, this was uh, really nice, but uh, everything was done uh, in mice, and we wanted to understand uh, whether this mechanism could hold true also in humans. And so uh, we decided to look at the 
expression of this, uh, the activation of this, sin this signaling pathways in human samples. Of course, these samples are quite rare, so uh, we were, uh, I would say, lucky to get this tissue from uh, uh, a couple of patients uh, who underwent heart transplantation because they develop uh, anthracycline-induced cardiotoxicity. And here what we found is that our beloved enzyme is indeed, uh, the expression of our beloved enzyme is indeed higher. Uh, in, these, uh, in the heart of this patient compared to a healthy heart. And uh, we were also quite uh, surprised to see that the pattern of the expression of this protein was somehow a kind of punctate uh, pattern reminiscent of these vesicles that I was uh, I just show you uh, before. <laughs> That's indicating that probably this expression and this, uh, the, the, this protein is really <coughs> located close to these vesicles that are in the process of uh, um, digesting these uh, damaged organs. But of course, um, uh, this was um, this was very interesting. But uh, and this could also. This also indicated to us that uh, the expression level of this enzyme could be used as a marker of uh, cardiotoxicity. But of course, the cardiac samples are not uh, really uh, easily accessible and are extremely rare. So we wanted to understand whether the same uh, upregulation of this signaling uh, could happen also in more accessible samples. And uh, we look at uh, blood samples of uh, patients uh, uh, treated with uh, doxorubicin. So we look at the expression level, the mRNA level of the PHRK uh, gamma. And what we found was that uh, indeed the expression of this, uh, uh, the mRNA expression of this PHRK was significantly increased in patients receiving uh, doxorubicin. And uh, the, the most intriguing finding was that only those who develop heart failure had uh, increase the expression levels of this PHRK, while other people receiving doxorubicin but not developing heart failure had completely normal level of uh, uh, PHRK gamma mRNA. That's indicating that the uh, amount of these enzyme could potentially, at least in, uh, in blood cells, in white blood cells, where we know that this enzyme is also highly expressed, could be used as a biomarker we still don't know whether this could be an early or late or mid-early biomarker of cardiotoxicity, but we could think about using this, the expression of this P3K as an early marker of cardiotoxicity in patients so that this could guide the, 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 the type of regimen these patients should undergo. And that's why we started this collaboration with some oncologists and cardiologists at the University Hospital in Torino. So basically, they are currently recruited patients for this clinical trial named CardioCare, uh, in which basically they are um, they plan to um, monitor patients with the lymphoma who uh, are um, basically scheduled for uh, chemotherapy, anthracycline-based chemotherapy, and or radiotherapy. And the aim of this trial is basically to use the strain rate echocardiography in the attempt to detect uh, um, cardiotoxicity in a very early stage in which this is still uh, subclinical and asymptomatic. And so this is the, the plan uh, basically um, to, to patients will be uh, analyzed in terms of uh, strain uh, rate uh, echocardiography uh, after the first cycle of uh, uh, chemotherapy and then at two different time points at the follow-up. And what we would like also to understand uh, would be to see whether the, the, the levels of the P3K gamma um, are somehow um, altered in these patients. And we hope, with the hope that this occurs very early after the first exposure to doxorubicin. And we would like to understand whether this could correlate with uh, the echocardiography data. But of course, this is something ongoing. So unfortunately, I don't have data to uh, to provide you with, but uh, hopefully I will uh, be able to show you this data in a very, uh, very, very soon. But in the meanwhile, while we are trying to uh, really uh, confirm our preclinical data in a more uh, uh, relevant clinical uh, situation, we uh, still uh, are work we are still working in uh, the preclinical in, in our preclinical models to understand whether we can hit this signaling with a molecule, with a compound, uh, so that we can uh, protect the heart, uh, uh, at least of any of mice, uh, from the damage induced by anthracycline. 
And uh, this is uh, somehow feasible because uh, small molecules targeting in a specific manner these isoforms are already available. There are uh, many, um, at least a couple of molecules that are uh, already in clinical testing. And the most important uh, point is that these molecules uh, um, also display um, anti-cancer action. This is quite uh, uh, an important feature of this kind of the molecules because if we want to protect the heart of, ca of cancer patients for um, the damage induced by anthracyclines, we, all, we, all, we also have to make sure that we are not going to interfere with the anti-cancer action of anthracyclines or at least we are not going to promote uh, um, somehow the, the regrowth of the tumor. And so that's why we thought that these molecules could be uh, quite good uh, car candidates as cardioprotectant because uh, at least we could uh, think about of, uh, protecting the heart on one side and not hitting uh, the tumor on the other side or at least we, or we could think about combining our molecule and to uh, further promote the anti-cancer action of anthracycline. As I told you before, this uh, P3K is not expressed in the tumor. This is uh, basically expressing the tumor microenvironment, so in macrophages. And uh, we, and, uh, together with our collaborators, we found basically that if we block the activity of this enzyme in the macrophages that are associated to the tumor, we are able to reactivate a kind of uh, a T cell mediated killing uh, of the tumor, and so basically the tumor uh, growth is stopped. And so we uh, decided to use uh, these molecules. One of these is, um, as I mentioned before, uh, already in clinical trial as anti-cancer action, but nobody so far uh, tested the, the, cardio, um, the, the effect of this molecule on the cardiovascular system. And we again went back to the preclinical model. So again, we used the, the wild type in kinase that mice treated with doxorubicin, but this time uh, we also implanted in these mice uh, uh, some breast cancer cells that we know to be uh, doxorubicin uh, sensitive. Indeed, you can uh, clearly see here that if we, we take these tumor cells, we put them in a plate, uh, uh, this um, doxorubicin can kill these cells quite efficiently in a dose dependent manner. So we injected the cells uh, in the mice. Mice were subjected to doxorubicin exactly as I showed you before. And what we found was that these cells indeed uh, grew less uh, in the kinase than animal already in basal condition, but uh, the, the effect was even more evident uh, when uh, uh, animals, of course, were treated with uh, uh, doxorubicin. And this was uh, basically due to the fact that the, the, the tumors from kinase dead animals were indeed less inflamed. So the number of CD11 positive macrophages uh, was significantly lower in kinase dead tumors compared to, to the wild type. We, we also wanted to, um, I mean, characterize a bit more which kind of macrophages were involved, but I, I mean, just to cut a long story short, we found that in these kinase dead tumors, we had less and to like macrophages, uh, which are known to be a uh, tumor uh, supportive, supporting. And so the final proof uh, was to demonstrate that with a small molecule compound, we could have uh, two effects uh, in, uh, in the same animal. So protect the heart from anthracycline damage, induced damage, and also slow the, the, the tumor progression. And here I show you uh, two examples. So we use two different compounds. One that is more, I would say, preclinical. So uh, just used for preclinical studies. And this is another one that uh, is among the, the, the inhibitors uh, that are currently under clinical testing as anti-cancer agents. And uh, basically these compounds, again, were used uh, in uh, two different models, uh, preclinical models uh, um, of a tumor. Uh, this is uh, the R2 new T uh, tumor model. It's basically a preclinical model uh, characterized by a spontaneous growth of um, uh, mammary uh, uh, cancer, uh, while in this case uh, the 41 is the same I showed you before, so basically we injected the cells uh, into mice. Anyway, what we found was that if we treated these mice with uh, a compound <coughs> targeting our P3K together with doxorubicin, we can almost completely block the, the, the growth 
of, uh, of the tumor, at least uh, at early stages, and we can also protect the heart from the decrease in fractional shortening, and this was the same also in this uh, other model of uh, tumor growth. And overall, the combination of these two different effects, so the fact that we could protect the heart from anthracycline cardiotoxicity, but we could also slow the tumor growth, led to a significantly increased survival of these mice compared to a so-called wild-type situation. And so <coughs> I hope I have convinced you today that uh, this signaling, the P3K signaling, has a key role in uh, the uh, cardiotoxicity induced by anthracycline, at the, at the same time could also represent a good potential uh, therapeutic target. Indeed, uh, by using a P3K inhibitor, we could uh, uh, block this uh, the, the, um, cardiotoxicity induced by anthracycline because we are able to uh, reactivate the recycling process, which is uh, um, an endogenous <coughs> recycling process that is uh, the autophagy, and we can prevent the so-called maladaptive uh, metabolic re rewiring of cardiomyocyte. But at the, at the same time, with the same compound, we could also modulate uh, the reshape the, the, the tumor-associated microenvironment, and we could uh, um, at least synergize with anthracycline to block uh, tumor growth. And in the end, I would like to thank all the people involved uh, in, uh, in this work, uh, in our group uh, in Torino, and uh, of course, uh, I have to thank Min Chuan Li, who did most of, of the work, and that now uh, left our lab, but I also have to thank James Cimino, who is uh, in the audience, who performed all the echocardiographic uh, studies, and Michele Russo recently joined our lab and uh, is also um, taking part to the echocardiography studies, all our collaborators in Italy and abroad, and I also want to uh, invite you to come to Torino next year in 2020, because we will uh, be hosting the uh, the, the meeting of the European section of the ICHR, so it would be a pleasure to host you there. And thank you for the attention.